Hello all, so in this tutorial we will be discussing one more example using the ESP1 module and how to connect our network to Wi-Fi. We will be also checking how we can actually do some uh, controlling of LEDs as well as read status from slide switches. Okay. So what I first did uh, is slightly modified my block design so I kept everything uh, from our previous tutorial but I just added our LEDs as well as uh, the eight slide switches to my block this i just added it from here uh, you can just drag from here under board option uh, so that you don't have to give any pin assignment once you drag and drop it here i will also have to enable uh, gp0 so that through connection automation you can uh, connect them together so that's the only change in hardware design and just uh, synthesize, implement, generate bitstream, and export it to SDK. Now, now in SDK, okay, so as I mentioned, this time I have uh, converted everything into proper driver format. Now we have these two files, Wi-Fi.h and Wi-Fi.cc. They are like our uh, driver source code. Now, since we are using C++ this time, uh, let's take some advantage of object-oriented programming. So instead of uh, modeling our hardware as structure, we are going to model it as a class. Okay. So this is the name of my class, ESP Wi-Fi. And you can see I have a bunch of uh, private functions as well as data and a bunch of public functions. Now under private, I have my UART controller under private and some functions are there maybe most of them we have seen in the previous tutorial like send command, receive data, send data, receive data, block transmit, receive. But all of them we have seen in the previous tutorial. Okay? So they are all same. Now instead of making them as functions, now they are inside a class. So maybe we can call them as method. But they are all private. That means we are not directly going to access them. We are going to use these functions or methods to access our Wi-Fi. So again, we are making some advantage of object-oriented programming. So I will have a function overloading here. So I have an init function to initialize Wi-Fi, but uh, both of them, they are taking different number of arguments. You can see, similarly, I have another function called get packet. There are two of them. Again, one is not taking any argument. One is taking an argument, we'll discuss. Then I have another function, send packet. For sending and this is the source code so let's see uh, what is in the source code so the first main function is this one init Wi-Fi so you can see there are two flavors of them in the first flavor this guy is taking only two arguments string type argument and if you are using this one the first one you will have to pass the Wi-Fi SSID Wi-Fi name as well as password for initializing the Wi-Fi. In the second option, it is taking three arguments. Okay, so the first argument is the board rate, the other two are again SSID and password. Now, yesterday I mentioned ESP chip, it always works at 115-200 by default when you buy it. But it is possible to change the board rate by issuing some command. Now, if you wish to increase the speed of communication between your Z board and the ESP chip, you can operate at a higher board rate. Now, what is the highest board rate that is supported will be decided not only by ESP, but also by our UART controller. Okay. So if you go to our block design here, if you go under general, you can see UART 0 we are using. Maximum board rate is this one, 921600. So you can give any of these values and they will be operating at this board rate. This is the default one, but you can use a higher board rate if you uh, want to have better speed between ESP and our Zinc chip. But don't try to give any value above this. Uh, it might not be working. And again, you don't give any random values because port rates, they work only on some fixed predefined values. And these are those values. So you have to give one of these values. Now, once you power cycle the board, 
it will again come back to 115200 so don't worry you won't be uh, messing the chip even if you give a wrong value okay so let's come back here so let's look at that uh, init wi-fi function so here you can see both of them are here so first part is same in both cases i am just initializing my uart and if you are using board right here you can see i am issuing this at command and this is the command used for changing the board rate for ESP, AT plus UART underscore CUR. That means change the board rate for current session. Once you power cycle, it will go back to the previous one. Uh, there is a command to permanently change it. So if you are using it, you should be very careful. Okay, okay so we are changing only for current session and we are checking the response. It, it should be okay. I'm not checking what it is but you need to read it and discard it and here we are changing the change the board rate for right for PSUART okay. we need to change his board rate also then only they will be in sync and uh, again we are checking the response of this function if it is saying like it is not successful we will print board rate error after that, we are calling this function init ESP. In both cases, we are calling this function init ESP with SSID and password. Okay, so init ESP is this function, and we have seen all these commands yesterday. They are the same commands. Uh, so we issue the AT command, we change the mode here, and here we are trying to connect to Wi Fi. So this part I have slightly modified. You can read and check what is happening. So now, even if you are already connected to Wi-Fi and if you try to reconnect, no issue, he can connect. In previous tutorial, if it is already connected, it won't work because he will first disconnect and he will reconnect. So I have modified it. Even if it is already connected, uh, it is perfectly fine. He will disconnect and reconnect if you, if you call this function again. So that's how it is modified and this we have seen to get the IP address, we print the IP address, we enable the MUX, we enable the server and we return. That's what this init function is doing. Okay, so if I look at my main .cc, you can see first I am creating an object of my Wi-Fi and I am using a do while loop to make sure he remains in this loop until he successfully connects to Wi-Fi. So you can see here, I'm calling uh, my Wi-Fi dot init Wi-Fi. And this is the board rate I am passing. This is the highest board rate supported. I'm passing the SSID and password. Now, SSID and password, again, uh, previous tutorial, I mentioned we need some extra codes at the beginning and end. Uh, now that is already taken care in the code itself. Here itself, you can see I am adding it. So when you're passing it, you don't have to put those extra things. You just have to declare them uh, as string and he will take care of it. And he will do that initialization part and he will come out. After that, we call this loop function and we pass this object here. And you can see what is happening in the loop function. So in the loop function, in an infinite loop, I will always call this function called get packet. So this is a new function, but that is just an abstract function of what we did yesterday. So let's see get packet function here. So get packet, this we have seen yesterday. I am just calling ESP receive data. We are checking uh, whether we received any packet and whether this IPD input packet data, whether that part is there. If it is there, we will return that received packet to whoever is calling. So it will come back here. Okay. So this uh, function is blocking. We are stuck here until we get a valid data. Now the return is that entire packet. Now remember in the previous tutorial, I mentioned when we send the result back, we need to send it to the same channel number from where we received the request. Now that part is again abstracted, so you can see that the channel number I am storing inside my object itself, current channel. So you can see uh, current channel here. 
it is an attribute of my object so that information I am storing here I am sending the ender receive data to the higher level function so when you are sending the result back you don't have to worry about the channel number that he will take care automatically so that function is this one send packet so you can see uh, when I am calling ESP send data that channel number I am taking from my object and I am just passing what our string is passed from the high level function and he will do it now get packet again there are two flavors of them one is without any argument and one is with a argument so this argument acts as a filter so when you call this function you can pass a filter uh, so that only if this portion is present in that packet then only the function will return otherwise the function will never return okay so he will he will be stuck for example you are expecting a, a packet for your led okay some led information uh, which all leds should be clone so you always check a packet whether it contains the string led so when you are calling from here you can pass the filter here like led uh, it will come here he will check that is there if it is there he will return the entire packet otherwise he is stuck here until you get a packet with that information next makes sense okay now let's see the main code so as i mentioned first we initialize it then we call this loop inside the loop okay i'm not passing any filter here i'm just waiting for a packet whenever i get a packet first i will check whether the information led equals is present within that packet if it is present what i will do is i will send back this message to whoever sent this packet turn on led basically our browser and within this packet i am assuming uh, whoever is connecting to our esp the server he will have a field called led equal to followed by the values of the eight leds in a string format so it's like one zero one zero one 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 something like this so each of them represent whether uh, the corresponding led is on or off so this is my assumption so whoever is sending data they should send like this the packet so what i'm doing is okay so after led i will have that uh, led information i am extracting that part using this substring you can see eight characters i am extracting and from that eight characters i am converting it into an integer it's written string to bin uh, actually it is string to num kind of thing anyway and that value i am writing to xpar gpio zero base address so xpar gpio zero base address gpio one base address yeah xpar x gpio one base address that is connected to led so whatever information is coming in that packet it will be sent to the gpa controller that means the corresponding leds should turn on that is one case another case is okay whenever i get a packet first i check whether led is there if i find led is not there i will check for this case otherwise also i am always checking for both okay uh, whether this part is the switch so if switch is there my assumption is uh, the current position of these slide switches, eight slide switches, I should send back to the guy who uh, requested this. So what I'm doing is I'm reading from XCGPIO zero base address, uh, that is this guy. So I will get the position of the switches in integer format. Now I'm calling this function into binary string. So he will convert that switch position into a string representing all of positions and that information I will just send back so that uh, to the to the client so that the client receives the current switch position okay so I guess makes sense now let's run it and see what is actually happening so let me first program it
so now this is how you will see so this dots will come until he connects to Wi-Fi successfully so he connected now he gave the IP address and he is saying like successfully started HTTP server and he will be stuck there now he is just waiting for some packet to come okay so let's send some packet so you take this IP uh, go to a web browser you type the IP so we are communicating with this particular IP now uh, as I mentioned I want to turn on the, some LEDs so you just type slash LED equal to whatever LED position you need so just type 10101010 and let's send the packet and you can see same LED is turned on so now let me just change it to 11110000 let's try you can see uh, those four LEDs are turned on on the screen you can see like LED turned on LEDs that message is coming from here then we are sending it now let's try the switch one okay so instead of LED let me type switch uh, switch is enough but let's try like a query and let me keep them one four of them on and this one also on let's see so you can see switch position one 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 zero 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 right now let's turn all of them on and try you can see all of them on now let's try both switch as well as LED. LED equal to 0000011111. Okay, so you can see LEDs have changed, uh, but uh, Here we send this message to that channel. So this second message won't be going to the channel. Okay, so I guess uh, that's fine. Or oh, you can slightly modify it uh, so that uh, both messages go. Okay, you can combine them to a single message and send that also. So anyway, uh, basically it is working. So when you are building any system, if you want to send any message, you type this IP followed by uh, what a message you want to send and while debugging if you feel like uh, things are not working uh, as I shown yesterday one place that you can do debugging is here uh, if you just uncomment this one and uh, if you do any communication you can see the entire message that is being received okay now I'm not power cycling the port I'm just rerunning so you can see like he'll be still able to connect this time and you can see all the messages coming because of this debug print Wi-Fi connected he's waiting for that okay thing okay IP address okay successfully started HTTP now let's try the same thing before if I am sending this message Okay, let's see what he actually received. Okay, so this is what he received. So this is a HTTP message called a uh, get message. Again, those who know about HTTP, there are different kind of packets. The get packet is usually sent by a client to server to get some page information. So there will be like get packet, post packet, different kind of packets. Anyway, so you can see it's a get packet and whatever you put here will be immediately coming after this get. The HTTP version, then the IP of the host, and then uh, subsequent things. Okay. Yeah, so whatever you are putting here, it will directly come to this guy. That's why he's able to work. Now instead of browser, if you need more interactive things, we can of course do it. We can write some Python code and we can have uh, better control. For example, 
uh, we can read some switch position based on those switch position uh, we can do some further action so that uh, we can either do in a browser but better it will be uh, to do in python maybe i'll put a tutorial on that also so this tutorial i am stopping here so please try this out uh, those who have access to ESP chip. Thank you.